Hey, what's up, my guys, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Today, we're looking at the finished 3D printer project. Now, this is something I did mostly on stream, as well as doing a little bit of work off camera, trying to get this fully functional. Um, I built this over the course of about four days, with the first stream working on the logic here, the second stream we did the USB, and the third stream we programmed and ran it. Now, a few things I did do off camera, like doing a bunch of bug testing and fixes for the logic, for the actual data that we programmed onto the USB drive, as well as the initial building for the 3D printer section here. So I wanna make this video as a kind of quick summary of what this project is, how this project works, and kind of talking about the frustrations that came with it. So to kind of make this easier, I'm gonna break this up into four parts. First is the gantry, the actual moving bed, the moving head, and all the major moving components. Second, we're gonna look at the logic, roughly explain how it works, look at the USB drive, as well as how we actually programmed it to print these little benchies, or as I've been jokingly calling them, the banshee. So the first thing I wanna look at is the actual bed and the printing surface here. This is broken up into four main components. In blue, you can see the bed movement, in green, you can see the head movement. In pink or purple, you can actually see the vertical movement up and down. And then here over in blue is the actual printing heads themselves that deposit the material. Each of these is controlled with a binary sequence. With the bed, it can move back and forth. With the head, it can move left and right. And with the actual movement of the vertical movement on the heads, it can drop all the way down to the bottom and then slowly one by one tick up. However, I don't have a manual control here. I'd have to jump into the logic to do that. You can see it moves all the way down. And then with each press, it raises slowly. So that's how I'm able to move the bed around and print different layers. I'm able to move it accurately by having each of these controllers be a binary sequence. So this is a four bit binary, meaning we have 16 spaces we can move to, including zero. So we have one, two, I keep clicking the wrong thing, four and eight. So depending on which one of these is on, we can move the bed head and the vertical motion anywhere between 0 and 15, which makes 16 total slots, which makes this print on a 16 by 16 by 16 square. Now for the head itself, choosing between the materials, there's just a little piston up here that if I press this, we'll just swap between the two. And when it prints, it just prints whichever head is active. So if I hit that, it'll move back to printing in plastic. If I hit it again, we'll print in glass, which is the support material. So that's how the actual print head works. Now let's talk a little bit about the logic. Now before we can really talk about how the logic works, we need to also understand how the actual computer reads its logic. Now this is running off 8-bit binary, and each command is 3 bytes. So if you look here, each one of these segments is a command. Command, and another command. The first section here actually tells the printer what process it's going to do. The first bit tells the head whether or not it's going to move the print head itself. And then the second tells it if it's going to be moving forwards or backwards. This bit, third bit, tells it whether or not the bed is going to move. And this tells it if it's going to move forward or backwards. The yellow bit here tells us if we're going to be printing in plastic or in glass. The orange bit is a special command that runs the draw square function. The pink bit here tells it to drop the head, in which case if it is at the top, it will have a stack overflow and go all the way down. And the red bit originally was going to run a home command for the head. However, we discovered that the pink bit can do the same functionality, so we ended up disconnecting the red bit. So if we look at this command here, it reads, don't move the head, move the bed forward, print in plastic, and then bring the print head all the way down to the base. 
The next line actually gives us the x, y coordinate for where the head needs to move. Um, this is split up into x is the four bits first, and y is the next four bits. And then it tells me how many times I'm going to repeat this command. So when this is ran, this first line is going to go into here and then move to all of these four little bits. One, two, three, four. This is just going to set um, if the print heads are moving, if they're moving forward or backward, as well as if we hit the print for square, it'll trip this logic over here. And the print square function kind of runs separately from everything else. Then the next line of bits, which is the x, y coordinates, will go straight into the head here, either moving the head of the printer or the bed of the printer, H and B. And then the third line, which tells us how many times it's going to loop, gets put into the M bit here, which is for memory. And then it does the actual function. It prints the block. It moves, and that's all controlled by the logic, which is down there. It's just a bunch of timer sequences. And then once it's moved the head, it will count up and then check if the count matches the memory. If it does, it will end the command. If it doesn't, it will keep running the command until it's finally finished. This is actually more complex when you get into the square placement command. This runs the same command However, it controls how these are set. So when you actually hit the print block, you don't have to set any of the other bits because this will control it directly. And what this will do is it will print using the head back and forth. Every time it reaches the memory, rather than stop the command, it will move the print head or move the print bed more specifically one up. This will cause it to draw a zigzag line, and then it'll check to see if the counter for the block placement is the same as the memory. If it is, that means it has finished drawing the square. If it isn't, then it has not finished drawing the square, and it will keep moving up until it has completed the command. Once the commands are complete and a reset signal is set, all of the logic gates in here are turned back off, Everything is wiped from the system, and it reads the next three bits, which are the command. This USB here is connected through just a single pin, and everything is talked to from the USB to the device through the use of pistons and sensors, meaning that you could actually swap out this USB with a completely different print program and run it if you wanted to. Right now, I only have the program for the Banshee, so... Unfortunately, there is nothing else you could put in here, but I could easily design more designs and you could just simply strap them to this and print them. Now there are three rows. You'll see the top row has pins on the actual USB and sensors on the device. This is data being read from the USB passed over. Then you'll notice pins on the device and sensors on the USB. Those are connected to the switches on top. So I could jump directly to a line for the USB. This is mostly something I used for bug fixing and testing. Um, I do have intents to use it in future projects. However, the 3D printer itself doesn't actually use this functionality. And then there are three little bits at the bottom. Those move the print head forward, backward, and reset its position. So right now it's reading the first line. However, if I advance it, you'll see the pins change and now it's reading the second line. And this is just a physical read head that slides down the entire USB using the same technology that is what moves the bed. These, um, these pistons are in a binary sequence. So one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. And this allows it to push the printhead the entire length and read individual slots, 
as well as buried into this gray section, there is a binary counter. Um, whereas the rest of the system here runs with 4-bit binary, this specifically runs with 8-bit binary. However, because of how it's stacked, I would still argue this entire system is 8-bit binary, even though the memory circuits here are only 4 bits for their particular purposes. So as we go down this, we can read a bunch of different commands. So this is draw vertical line that is reset to the bottom of the bed at these x, y coordinates and draw a line that is this length, draw a line vertical at these coordinates that is this length, draw a line coordinates length. And this keeps going until you get to the next layer, which this moves the print head up a layer and then draws a horizontal line at these coordinates, this length, and this keeps going. You can see here, it's the first in the row. That is a draw square command, coordinates, length, so on and so forth. And this just keeps going to actually print the Benchy. Now, actually printing this is something we had to completely program. This model was actually supported by one of the community members. Um, it was sent to me by Shuttle. I did have to make some modifications to make it more accessible for this printer because one of the limitations is the size of the USB. Originally, I had made it, um, I think it was 128 bytes long. Um, however, because of the Benchy, I did actually increase the size of the USB to be 256 bytes of storage. And that is pushing the limits of what this printer is doing. And I had to do some optimization to make it possible to print. So the glass and plastic is the underlying model that was sent to me by shuttle. And then the bubble wrap and the carpet here are modifications I had to make to make it slightly easier to print. Once the model was figured out, I then cut it up into slices and then cut those slices into an order of operations. That is what I printed onto the USB. So this is the first layer. There is those print vertical lines at coordinate, length, and all of this was scribed into the USB. And there's the last two for the chimney. Now, unfortunately, this design is pretty slow solely because the print head is a physical like item that is moving through the length of the USB that takes time. It does wobble a bit, so you have to be careful. And at the end of the day, I think the thing I could improve the most is the USB. But for right now, it functions. It functions slowly, but it functions. If you saw the time lapse that I did the other day, um, that actually took two hours and 47 minutes to record because the machine took so long. Also, I need to reset some stuff because we were pressing buttons and it changed values. So if we look here, you can see the pistons move. We're reading the first line. And then here in a second, you'll see the print head shift to the next slot. It reads the next line. It puts the data into the head and bed calculation. There we go, which moves the printer. Then it'll move to the next slot. Read how many times it needs to move and it'll put that into the memory bit. And once all of that is done, it'll start to run the command, which is this logic here, which will start printing moving the head, checking to see if it's done it the number of times it's been told to. If not, it'll keep doing it over and over until the memory bit and the counter bit are equal to each other, and then it'll reset the system and read the next three bits. And it's really cool just to see it ticking along here.
There we go, it just completed. So it'll reset. And then read the next three lines, read that command, set the switches, write the memory, set the heads, and go about that loop until it completes it. Next command, next command. And over the process of two and a half hours, we'll print a Banshee. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to sit here for that entire time. However, I am going to say that I do intend to put this up on the workshop. So once you see this video, it should be up there ready to do a download. If you enjoy the video that I did, enjoy the content I create, enjoy the streams that I made, and seeing all my frustration from this project, I will ask that you simply subscribe. So, I'm going to end it here. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, peace.